Hi everyone, my name is Sean Dees and I am a senior software engineer. In this course, we're going to be going over the Fetch Web API for JavaScript. Uh, we'll cover exactly how it's used to build dynamic web applications. We will also cover how it's used in real world applications. And finally, we're going to build a small React applications where we're actually going to be fetching data from an endpoint. By the end of this course, you'll have a solid understanding of RESTful APIs and also how to implement Fetch in your own projects. To understand why Fetch is useful, we have to zoom out and take a bigger picture look and get an understanding of RESTful APIs. Simply put, RESTful APIs allows us to push and pull data from a data store using an endpoint. If we can take a look at our diagram here, we can see the RESTful API in action. So we have REST clients, which shows here as a desktop browser or a mobile device. A request is made to the backend server for a resource, which can be XML, it could be images, it could be user data. And if that request is successful, it's going to pass back uh, what's called a JSON. So it's gonna send that back to the client, and then from there, the client can do whatever it needs to do with that data, whether it's rendering to the screen or doing some sort of calculation, um, this is where that would apply. Uh, so there are four common methods that are used in RESTful APIs. So there's the get method, which is used for actually getting data from the API. There is the post method, which is used to push data to the API. There's the put method, which is used to update existing data on the API. And then there is the delete uh, method that is used to uh, remove data from the API. To get a more solid understanding of this, we can think of it in terms of using Facebook. So when we're scrolling our Facebook feed and we're seeing post, we are essentially getting data from the Facebook server. So as, as we swipe along, and if you notice, there's a point where it has to you can actually see it's like a small loading icon and it only flashes for a split second. But what's happening is the client is making a request to the server to get more posts. So that's why the feed looks continuous. Uh, in terms of, so that would be, that would be a get method. The, the client is getting the data from the server. For posting, you can think of this as actually creating a post on Facebook when you uh, make a post and you say, you know, today is a great day and you post that to your timeline, you are sending data uh, to the Facebook server. The same sort of happens for when you update existing um, data. So using the put method. So let's say you wanted to change your um, your your icon or your, your, your header profile, or your profile picture for Facebook uh, to, to a different image. That would be using a, a put method. You're updating existing data. And for delete, uh, the same applies if you wanted to remove a post that you posted. If you wanted to remove the post that you just made where you said, uh, today's a great day, uh, you go remove that post, that's a delete method. We are removing that data um, that we just you know, implemented from the database. So that's kind of how a real world application uh, works for um, these four different common operations uh, of get, post, put, uh, and delete. So now that we have a solid understanding of RESTful APIs, you may still be wondering how Fetch fits into this equation. Well, Fetch is what we used in JavaScript to actually interact with that RESTful API. We can do the get, post, put, and delete uh, operations using uh, the Fetch method. To show how we actually use Fetch within an application, I've built a small React application to go over uh, the use case where we would want to fetch data from a server and use it within our application. So what we have here is our fetch function and it takes one required parameter, which is the URL uh, of the endpoint, and it takes an optional parameter, which is an object for configuration. Uh, so what we're gonna jump into here is I'm going to show you the app that I've actually built. So what it's gonna do is display a list of users when I click the load users button. So the endpoint that we just looked at, the JSON placeholder .com forward slash users. If we were to paste that into the browser's address bar, we're gonna get back JSON. 
This is JavaScript object notation. And for this particular endpoint, what we're getting back is users. We're getting uh, example data. This particular website has set up a server uh, as an endpoint that when we make a request to the server, it's going to send back uh, this example user data. So what we're going to do is use this user data in our application. So here, what we're doing is we're making a request to the endpoint to receive users. Once we get a response, we're going to change that JavaScript object notation, that JSON, into an actual JSON object uh, that we can then use within our application. Then what we're going to do here is we're setting that data uh, to our show users hook. And if you're not familiar with React, uh, I can make another course on uh, the fundamentals of React to show what we're actually doing it. But uh, for the sake of brevity, I'm going to assume that you already are familiar uh, with React. So here we have a card component, which is just going to display the name, email, as well as the phone number of this user. Here is where we're actually mapping through all of the users that are returned from the endpoint um, and we're going to, for each user, it's going to have its own card, and we're passing in the name, email, and phone props. Here, we have a button. On click, it's going to load the actual users, right? It's going to make the call within this load users function um, to the server in order to request this data. And it's going to populate and render on the screen. So that's essentially what we're doing. Now let's see it in action. Click the load users button. And there we have it. We have all of our users that are laid out in cards. And we achieve this by using fetch. We fetch uh, data from a server. The server returned the data as JSON. We converted that JSON to an actual JavaScript object. And then we were able to render uh, each user to the screen. Hopefully you found this course useful. I will definitely be making more courses in the future that will dive deeper into the different use cases for Fetch, the different operations that we'll be able to perform. Uh, but until next time, have a great day.